been a pretty long time bethesda fan and uh we got the summer showcase coming up here soon um and i think we're getting a whole bunch of leaks we're gonna start figuring out a, a real roadmap here so let's dive into this and uh see what we got going on here see if it's looking good for us or if it's looking bad. The Bethesda and Xbox Summer Showcase is just a few weeks away now, and just like every year, several very interesting yeah, Black Ops 6 is going to be the, the big one risen up. that they're going to may very well be giving assume. us some color on what we could actually see at this showcase. Like this nameless, faceless 4chan leak that claims a Fallout 3... So wait, we've got Perfect Dark gameplay, Fable gameplay, Avowed trailer, Indiana Jones, Starfield DLC, Fallout 3 remaster... South of Midnight Overdose Trailer. Wait, new Banjo game, Lost Odyssey. Gears 1 through 3 remasters. Oh. Six other announcements. Remaster is coming in October of 2024, with Fable and Perfect Dark dropping in 2025, and apparently even a trailer for Kojima's new game Overdose featuring Kyle MacLachlan from the Fallout TV show and more. Overdose. So of course it wouldn't be leak season without a 4chan I've heard nothing like about this, Overdose. but I think the topic of Fallout at this year's summer showcase could actually make quite a bit of sense, with a new game announcement being more likely than ever. But what's that noise? Oh, that's just a fire alarm because I suck at cooking, or at least I did before I got to Today's video sponsor, HelloFresh. Cooking actually becomes way easier when you get easy to follow instructions, all of the ingredients nicely pre portioned for you, and all of this just showing up to your front door. Uh, HelloFresh nice actually package. has some good meals. I've tried a lot of the meal prep services. I've tried this meal in literally tried, uh, 15 minutes, uh, Hello which Fresh, is pretty I've impressive tried for me. Eat because, and yes, HelloFresh has over 45 tried, meals you can pick from uh, each week, and since eat, I'm lazy, I normally clean, opt for the fresh, quick, something. it's still very tasty. And then 20 I've also tried Fresh and Lean. And HelloFresh genuinely helps me save money. I was eating out because I didn't know what to cook, but now I have everything. I need, and all meals. these obscure ingredients are only Hello the amount Fresh, I will actually use, so I'm going to have taste. far less waste. Well, I had to Summer cook is meals fast myself. approaching, and HelloFresh has and genuinely be, helped me hit some fitness goals thanks to their protein smart options. Let's also enjoy our meals. A lot of those if you meal click my link like in the video the description, use my code, you'll get 10 free meals plus free dessert for life while your subscription is active. But looking back at the showcase leaks, a few weeks ago, Jez Corden, who is one of the most reputable Xbox insiders, said that he heard Xbox wants the next Fallout game out even sooner. This following the success of the Fallout TV show. And the developer behind this new Fallout game may not even- Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you guys, I ain't finished the show. I made it to, uh, I wanna say like episode 5 or 6. It kinda started getting a little boring to me. Um, not gonna spoil anything, but I do need to go back and finish it, cause I've heard raving reviews about it. And it just makes sense why they're doing all this about Fallout now, cause I mean, the show has a big success. Drives a bunch of people back. They're all playing the games. They're riding like the hype train right now, and they need to they need to capitalize off of it while they can. Not even be Bethesda Game Studios. They're currently formulating plans on how to get the next Fallout here for us sooner rather than later. I'm suggesting someone else is going to build. For and of course, this just makes sense. The Fallout TV show was massive, and yeah, tons of people flocked yeah, back to Fallout 76. They've got a hype train going right now off the show. The real way Bethesda and, uh, makes serious money from the Fallout off TV off show forever. is having a game of their own to sell. Otherwise, but if, if they're trying to rush Fallout out. Bethesda's already known for being crazy buggy, which for Skyrim it kind of worked, but kind of gets old after a while. You know, you just want to play a good game, and uh, if they're going to rush it even more, they just need to make sure that, that they give themselves time to actually play test it and uh, work some of that out. But it's Bethesda at the end of the day. You know how that goes. Guys, they're likely just getting that flat licensing fee. And this leak from Jez Corden ended yeah, they're not up making enough money off the show. incredibly well. Just three days later on the Kind of Funny Games cast, Todd Howard said Bethesda is focusing on making sure the games maintain their quality, but also finding ways to right. increase their output, <laughs> as Bethesda doesn't want to wait maintain that long quality. either. And during this, he may have even confirmed two new Fallout games already in production. What are we doing on mobile? Two new what are we Fallout doing games. in 76? What are we doing with this thing? What are we doing with this other thing? <laughs> and and when, when are these landing? There, he was laying out the runway for Fallout as a franchise, so many fans think that as he says this thing and this other thing, he is in fact talking about two new Fallout projects that are on the way. And one of these definitely could be a Fallout 3 remaster, which even beyond this dodgy 4chan leak. I ain't gonna lie to you guys, I think uh, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas were by far the best Fallouts. Fallout 4 was like, alright, and Fallout 76, it just didn't hit. 
we did get a far more credible leak from Microsoft than so this I remember seeing this a while back. This was a uh, this is the roadmap that somebody leaked within the the studio, and a lot of it has come true. Um, obviously, it was pushed back a lot. Like obviously, Elder Scrolls not coming out this year, uh, but the Elder Scrolls Online has been getting expansions basically every single year, and we're just now getting the next Elder Scrolls, which was supposed to be last year. Um, and also Indiana Jones isn't out quite yet. Starfield hasn't released their DLC yet. Um, so we're going to see about it, but a lot of these games, Red Falls come out, you know, the, the timeline has held up. Um, and as you can see, we've got Fallout 3 remaster coming out, supposed to come out after Elder Scrolls. So I get, I guarantee you with the show that came out and all the hype that they have, they're going to be moving the mass the fallout 3 remaster up a ton ahead of elder scrolls and elder scrolls is like out of all the games on this list it's by far what i feel like probably most of us are most excited about um but it's still gonna be a while sadly guys themselves late last year as this bethesda Project roadmap was Platinum, published during the is. ftc case and of course has a fallout 3 remaster labeled on it this roadmap was made by bethesda there's an oblivion remaster on so there too which could be outdated but as you'll start to see a lot of sick. this roadmap does hold up it is a i never actually played oblivion but i heard it's actually better than skyrim and i put i put so much time into skyrim i literally discovered every single cave i've done every single quest both dlcs the vampires, the the Dragonborn Island. I mean, I've done everything in that game. And it was so fantastic. But Oblivion, I've never tried once. And now it's like the graphics are so old that I don't really want to go back. And I tried finding uh tried finding some mods for it, but there's none that like obviously can can change the game being that old to like modern day graphics to make it look somewhat decent. They follow through remaster slated as a fiscal year 2024 release. And of course, it right now is 2024, although the vast majority of games listed on here did get some kind of delay due to the pandemic. We, of course, just saw how Microsoft shut right. down several Bethesda. Yeah, and I saw this. Redfall was a complete disaster. Microsoft shut down these studios. And Redfall, I mean, <laughs> they probably lost a ridiculous amount of money on that. Hi-Fi Rush, though, I've heard is a pretty good game i haven't tried it um i never even heard about it until all this controversy and drama about the studios getting shut down um but I, then i started hearing that hi-fi rush was like the outlier because it was such a good game and it did some really good numbers but then i mean it's all about money at the end of the day for these guys like you got to think about it realistically if it, it couldn't have made enough money it didn't Obviously, it didn't make enough money. That's why they shut the studios down. The Simple studios. As that. This leaked to the public via a memo. And the core justification for the closures on that memo was we were making these tough decisions to create capacity to increase investment in other parts of our portfolio. Yeah, literally. So they are saying right here they had to make tough decisions. They had to cut out these that were taking up a lot of the budget and time from the people that were working on them to move them over to the games that actually are making them money, which are Fallout. Elder Scrolls, these other games. And focus on our priority games. And when it comes to priority games, not much is going to top Fallout right now. Fallout 4 is almost nine years old, but still one of the most played games on both Xbox and Steam right now. That's actually now. crazy when you think about it. Skyrim is one of the most played games too, and Fallout. And uh, yeah, they're, I mean, they're old as crap at this point. But I mean, look at this current players peak today. I don't know when he filmed this. 72,000 people are still playing that game, or 80,000 on a daily basis. They're still playing Fallout 4. Skyrim, I don't know, it's somewhere on there, but to be a, to be competing with some of these other games is crazy. Fallout 76 I mean, look at Call far. of Duty. Call of Duty is, that's so sad, man. So sad. Fallout 4, nine years old, almost has more players than Call of Duty. Are behind it. So we're hearing how both Xbox and Bethesda want a Fallout game out faster. And even Obsidian has been saying that they are Call more than off. happy to work on a new one. So yeah, Obsidian was the, they outsourced Fallout New Vegas to Obsidian. And uh, honestly, I think Fallout New Vegas was the best Fallout of all of them. And 
I don't know. I actually, I think I heard something a while back that they wouldn't be uh, working with Obsidian, even though Obsidian, I think, uh, I think I remember seeing Obsidian said that they would, they would do a new remaster. If we look back at this Todd Howard they quote, do it seems one. completely plausible to me that one of the games mentioned here is a Fallout 3 remaster, while a second game could be a spin-off game that's being worked on by Obsidian as they finalize production on Avowed and they, they look need to, to let that Obsidian make elsewhere. It, I mean, based it off these probably leaks, literally so much everyone money. wants more Fallout. Todd Howard does, Bethesda does, we do, and even Xbox does. But yeah, sadly, Fallout's this the doesn't mean we'll game. be seeing more of it at the showcase, and it definitely doesn't mean Obsidian it'll be coming crushed out this it with year. New Vegas. One of the big issues I have with this leak beyond, you know, four is the remaster coming out in late 2024, October is specifically what it says. I think this overarching negative sentiment Fallout around Xbox remaster. as a result of some of the recent in closures October. as well as other news makes a Fallout announcement at know, the showcase only, a lot more likely. Like, if you announce Fallout like even if it's just a away. title reveal with a developer, you'll get a ton of fans incredibly excited for the future of Xbox. But based off this recent Jez Corden report, it's only just in the last- I mean, it could be possible that at the summer showcase, that they announce the remaster. I mean, they already have the game. It can't be that Last hard to just so go that back Xbox and has been looking redo to get the graphics. Fallout games out quicker, which makes me think that they weren't doing that already. And in turn, I kind of doubt a new Fallout game will drop this year. Although something that could be wound up. I don't know. I mean, it. Bethesda is very slow, but I mean, five months. If they already are working on it, and it was already on the roadmap from like a couple years ago. It could be almost done, and then they just announce it at the the summer showcase here. Up relatively quickly is possible. Fallout 4 Creations. Paid Not gonna get my hopes up. Fallout 4. But Bethesda just added the system to Skyrim, and it's coming to Starfield right around the same time as the showcase. But their most popular game right now doesn't have it for some reason. As well as whatever Fallout 76 DLC is dropping later this year will almost certainly be present at the showcase. So either way, things are definitely moving with Fallout, and I wouldn't be shocked if at the showcase we see a high-level tease of something. It could be as simple as this Elder Scrolls 6 teaser, though, except for a Fallout spin Yeah, if you remember this, when did this come out? Elder Scrolls 6 trailer. Hold on. When did that come out? It's been so long, and they, like, there was no point in them even dropping that. I mean, it's actually insane. Five years ago, they dropped the the trailer, the announcement teaser. They, I think, they jumped the gun way, way ahead of the ahead of the curve. They must have like got out of a meeting, They're like you know what, we're gonna make an Elder Scrolls Six. They walked out of that meeting that day and tasked somebody with making this video, and uh, I don't know. It's been it's been a long time, and we haven't gotten any other updates off or even a Fallout 5. Although, maybe this leak is real. In the past couple of days, several insiders have come forward to suggest an older Xbox JRPG could get a remaster reveal at the showcase. Shepshaw Nick took to Twitter to say, if what I've heard is true, fans of the Xbox 360 era JRPGs will have something to look forward to at the showcase. Jess Corden recently made a big predictions post around the showcase and follows this up by saying, I've heard about some nostalgic announcements that should chase away the blues for classic Xbox 360 RPG fans. And as far as Xbox 360 JRPGs go, there's really uh... two major options here that many fans are speculating about, that being either Lost Odyssey or Blue Dragon. All this new leaks about an Xbox 360 JRPG being at the showcase really just came to light in the past well, 24 Odyssey hours. Was on that list, so many users it? immediately started to draw connections to this 4chan leak, which is now several yeah, weeks Lost Odyssey old. Remaster. And on that leak, rather randomly in fact, it does mention a Lost Odyssey remaster as being one of the announcements at the showcase. Years one through Not three many people were making this prediction be, before the 4chan be posted. Sick. Now we may have several very reputable insiders backing it up. So does that mean this leak's true? Are we actually going to also get a Fallout 3 remaster in October? Unfortunately, almost certainly not, as many have further suggested that no, it's not actually going to be a Lost Odyssey, but instead it will be a Blue Dragon remaster. In Jez Gordon's report, he says game. that the announcement will chase away the blues for classic Xbox 360 RPG fans, many presuming the blues is a reference to uh, Blue Dragon, and a well, now deleted tweet, words. reputable insider Nate the Hate posted a gif of a Blue Dragon. It's but some of the recent like leaks Pokemon, and rumors though. from Xbox insiders do seem to suggest that this FTC leaked roadmap for Bethesda may end up becoming a lot more relevant at this year's summer showcase. Tom Warren, one of the most reputable Xbox insiders, reports that Microsoft is supposed to have a lot of games to show this year, more than the 2023 showcase. Yeah, they need, expect to I mean, they need a big showcase because they've been going through some heat 
especially dropping those studios, they went under some deep fire there. And then uh, I watched an interview with, I think it's the CEO, it's a woman, and uh, she talked about why they dropped the studios, basically saying they didn't make enough money, exactly my point. And they were talking about how they're really pushing towards like cloud gaming and mobile gaming, which I know mobile gaming is like really big in China, but over here, I mean, I don't really like sitting on my phone for, you know, playing like this. I used to do it on like the Nintendo DS, but I don't know if I'm going to play, like I want to sit down and like play, not play on the phone. I don't know about Here, how I the mean, 2025 lineup is looking what y'all think below, some launch dates for some anticipated Obviously Xbox there's a big games, audience for it. With further comments suggesting that this showcase could be a legendary one. We heard from Xcloud Tim Dog how this Xbox showcase was meant to be insane, and even just yesterday Jez Corden weighed in saying that the potential for the I'll be honest, ever since the Elder Scrolls trailer that came out, every single showcase where they release games and Xbox mentions something I look forward to, I, I hope, for a new trailer for Elder Scrolls, and every single time I've been disappointed. So, if they really need a, if they want to come out with a bang, then this could be the year that we get one. Because, I mean, you got to think, too, they initially planned to release Elder Scrolls in 2024, and now it's been pushed back a couple years. My guess would probably be like 2027. That's still three years. So... That would be lit, though, but don't get your hopes up. The show so. to be remembered is one of Xbox's best events for raw gaming quality is incredibly high. So with all of that in mind, I think this roadmap and suddenly after the becomes Starfield a lot disaster, more informative. As things stand, it seems like we're right big. around here on this roadmap. Lots of stuff was delayed. All right, so he's thinking we're here. So what? The Oblivion remaster? I mean, maybe we're getting the Oblivion remaster coming soon, but they're trying to focus on Fallout. So my guess would be that they moved Fallout 3 remaster up because Indiana Jones, I think that's coming out here soon. The Starfield DLC hasn't even been uh, announced, but we are getting a new Elder Scrolls expansion this month, actually. So, I mean, that lines up. Due to the pandemic, so it Project has a roughly two-year offset. But if you do apply it to your offset, Platinum. it has been incredible. Okay, so this is his updated. 2024, 2025, 2026. Yeah, there's no way we're getting an Oblivion remaster. Really accurate though. otherwise. And yeah, we're going to talk about this one in a moment, don't worry. But with these rumors suggesting that we should expect to hear about a lot of games, including some 2025 games, the big one to look at here is Doom, with the Doom Zero Year. We've had several signs pointing towards a new Doom reveal at this showcase. Of course, that's leaked roadmap being a big one, on but that. also in a recent article, Tom Warren ends by saying Microsoft will be banking on some new announcements lifting the Doom around Xbox. Italicized and capitalized, this seems to be a pretty so clear indication on that words. Doom will be at this showcase. That's even further backed up by a recent trademark Those filing by Zenimax for IDKFA. Nice. This is a cheat code from the original Doom game, giving you full armor, all weapons, full ammo, and- I actually forgot, they used the Doom uh developers for combat for something i forgot which game it was all keys as far as i can tell there is not a proper consensus on what idk fa stands for some saying it's id keys firearms ammo based off what using the command actually gives you but considering doom's past marketing some others have speculated that it is i don't know fuck all because you're using a cheat code to get a bunch of freebies so barring a gigantic coincidence it seems like this has to be doom and my assumption is idk fa will end up being the naming of one of these dlcs which you could also see on this leaked roadmap so perhaps a launch bundle of DLC and the game Year's both zero. being shown at the showcase, hence the new trademark filing. This also makes me wonder if this new Doom so game could really be coming out come this out year as opposed to 2025. Year, because otherwise, like. why are you announcing DLCs a full year before the game is even coming out? Although, with all right. of that in mind, Doom may very well end up becoming one of the most talked about games at the showcase and not necessarily for good reasons. Over the last few months, we have heard from various insiders like Jez Corden how more Xbox games are going to other platforms. We of course saw this blow up earlier this year as Microsoft officially
actually announced four games would be no longer exclusive to Xbox. And in a recent report from Jez Corden, they claimed that many more games could be coming to other platforms. The plan to move Xbox games to other platforms is codenamed Latitude internally. And I know there's debate I mean, it just makes at sense. Microsoft the more about whether or they can not put it this on, is a good the idea. More, money they're more upcoming Microsoft-owned games. Why, why limit yourself to one platform with just PC and Xbox when there's millions of people on PlayStation that would buy the game? or the games and I mean they're just that's just money they're missing out on I mean I, this whole thing about consoles has been completely stupid in my opinion over the last uh, however many years there's always this beef between Xbox PlayStation and PCs just like in the middle like eating popcorn watching both sides but most games that are exclusive to either side usually comes out on PC so why not just buy a PC consoles are literally smaller cheaper uh, computers like they're literally smaller cheaper pcs just buy a pc These slated for playstation are already being developed at least for now they're potentially obvious games that you'd most likely expect and yes while it's true microsoft is a prolific publisher on playstation already it is typically revolved around specific franchises like minecraft from what i've heard microsoft is just pushing for no red line for what games could come to playstation and it all revolves around satya nadella and cfo amy hood's mandate to increase every department's margins to me this just makes perfect sense and really isn't even that surprising I said this a few months I ago. Like Xbox low key. I mean, they're about their bread, and they because, want to yeah, get it Microsoft on every, every platform. Microsoft strategy clearly isn't like working, so they're trying new things, one and one of those things is releasing their games elsewhere. In his most recent predictions report, Jez Corden speculates that we should be getting an update on that during the Xbox showcase period as well. Going on to say, I think an obvious example that we could see go multi-platform, as in Xbox Series X slash S and PlayStation 5, would be the next Doom. I don't think this is necessarily a leak, but more so than anything else an educated prediction knowing some details but perhaps not entirely sure if doom on I playstation like we haven't got a new lock, console in but doom a while coming too. to playstation also really wouldn't shock me and probably shouldn't shock you either xbox is clearly trending this way phil spencer the head of xbox literally said he believes exclusives are going away that's got to start somewhere and doom does seem like a yeah because like the appeal back in the day was like okay we make an exclusive that's why you buy the PlayStation. That's why you buy the Xbox. You want to play Halo? You buy Xbox to play Halo. But now it's like they're just limiting the 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 one side of how many how much more money they would make putting their games on other platforms cuz they don't make a lot of money off consoles. I'm pretty sure both companies like lose money on the consoles. The the goal is to get people to buy them to then buy the games from the studios that they own. So at the end of the day, it's it's becoming way more profitable to have the games on more platforms because they make way more money off microtransactions and all this, all this bullshit that they put in the games like battle passes and season passes or whatever. People are buying microtransactions. They're making way more money off putting the games on multiple platforms versus selling the exclusive, hoping that people buy the consoles. I mean, it's just dumb. A solid choice for that. And while I do kind of doubt we see this explicitly mentioned at the Xbox showcase, if it's happening, we'll likely learn about it right around the same time. So maybe they don't say it on stage at the showcase, but instead, as the store page goes live, you're like, oh, yeah, that's not only coming to Xbox, it's coming to PlayStation also. Or even from an interview with Xbox, perhaps at the Xbox Game Showcase Extended, which happens a few days after the main showcase. And in my opinion, if we really do get the reveal that Doom... I'm pretty sure somebody... I'm pretty sure they were trying to uh, put Xbox Game Pass on PlayStation. Somebody comment and uh, tell me if that's true. Doom Year Zero is coming to PS5 sure day one. That will almost certainly dominate the news around so this event. That would make so much money off that. But there are a few other games that could definitely pop up from this roadmap. Project Kestrel is the upcoming ZeniMax Online Studios MMO, and Project Platinum is that upcoming Blade game. Both of these games could end up being 2025 oh, releases, but based game. off those comments by Tom Warren, we very likely could be hearing about and them the and one, maybe so even getting released. ZeniMax dates. is making their or, own hey, MMO maybe it just ends up being this Oblivion remaster. I've covered this one to death at this point, so I will be brief, but it could be the 
the single most promising surprise for this year. On July 30th, 2023, a Reddit user leaked a variety of games supposedly being worked on by Virtuous Games Paris. This user was claiming to be an ex-employee, but he was verified by the moderators as genuinely being an ex-employee. So right off the bat, this random Reddit post leak has a lot more going for it than the vast majority of other leaks out there. This user went on to claim that a project codenamed Alter was a remaster slash remake of Oblivion, with there being ongoing discussions as to whether or not this could turn into a full-on remake. That due to the fact that this was being developed using a pairing system, so visuals and certain it overhauls on would be Engine done by 5. Unreal Engine 5, while much of the actual gameplay would be handled by Gamebryo, Oblivion's original engine. And yeah, this is the thing, other games have been remastered in exactly the same way and received Dude, glowing would be reviews so as a result, and the anticipated release date for Oblivion. this one was either late 2024 or early 2025, depending on whether or not this became a full remake or just remained as a remaster. And this does make sense. Games using this dual engine style can go through and individually pick which system should be redone with the newer engine. So even though they are fairly far into development, potentially just a little over a year away from release, you could still be having those discussions about a full remake versus remaster because they're using the dual engine system and kind of can just pick and choose what to remake. And at the time, that's what I'm saying. I feel like, like he's saying, it's almost it's extremely unlikely that we would get it in October. But if they're using dual systems for Fallout Three, the remaster, they already have the game, right? I mean, they, it can't be that crazy to go and like revamp the graphics and the lay of the land. I mean, I know there's obviously a lot of stuff in the game to make to do that. It's going to take time, right? But at the same time, they already have the game. It's not like they're creating it from scratch, which is probably the harder harder thing to do. And they have all the baseline code of the systems and everything like that. So I could be wrong. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I know there's probably a lot that goes into it. But if they've been working on it at all, and it was on the timeline from like four years ago is when that thing came out, it could be possible that they drop at the Summer Showcase. They're probably going to highlight Doom, it sounds like. They're highlighting... Uh, the upcoming remaster of, I mean, I would assume they're going to at least announce the remaster of Fallout 3 and then maybe Oblivion. I don't know, but it's possible it could come out in October. And we heard about this leak. We also Unlikely, heard from Insider he said, Drake that there were talks of possible, an Oblivion remaster being shopped around. So there you have two completely distinct sources saying this is a thing. And each of those sources were fairly reputable, not just randoms. All that happened in July of 2023. But about six weeks later in September, we got this roadmap leak from the FTC trial. And this too had an Oblivion remaster listed on it for fiscal year 2022, which thanks to delays would work out to right around right now. You can also see Indiana Jones and the Starfield mm, so DLC are listed here, the, and those uh, are of course remaster. actually slated for this year. So it would follow that the same could be true for this Oblivion remaster, a 2024 release date. So what's crazy is that original dual engine leak sounds, we've now had three reputable sources, one of which was literally Microsoft, claim that an Oblivion remaster is at least being talked about, planned, or being worked on at some point. There's been so much Fallout hype as of late that I think this one kind of just fell into the background, but I think this is incredibly likely to pop up at the showcase and based off that reddit leak which only got more reliable as more leaks continued to back it up we definitely could be seeing an oblivion remaster in 2024 with the fallout hype i could that totally see this one getting pushed though perhaps they pursue a more yeah i mean my assumption with the tv show and all the hype that's going around with fallout is that they would push the oblivion remaster back probably to next year and then try to put everything they can into the fallout 3 remaster for a remake and a perfect release money. date is just sitting there with march 20th as the 19 year anniversary for oblivion and if this does get pushed to next year that ago. may even mean we don't hear about it anytime soon while a reveal at the summer showcase is promising we have heard how todd howard loves those short announcement to reveal cycles and they could absolutely do this reveal an oblivion remake at the developer direct at the end of january and have it released to everyone just six weeks later in march March. That would definitely get fans going wild. But one way or another, next yeah, year I mean, we like said, are getting something an Oblivion big remake year. as the Sky Oblivion project, where fans are remaking Oblivion in Skyrim's engine, also has a 2025 release date, and their most recent update video looks absolutely spectacular. If the official remake from Bethesda drops just a few months before this mod, which has over five years of dev time on it, that would probably be the biggest travesty in modding history, so I really hope that doesn't happen. Oh, but man. hey, one way or another, Sky you're going to be playing the Oblivion remake years. sometime soon. Starfield, 
world will of course be at the showcase. Game. Todd Howard confirmed as much himself when we did hear from Tom Warren that the Shattered Space DLC is dropping in September. We know that Shattered Space Shattered is going Space. to be a House Varun themed DLC. We saw this confirmed in a recent behind the scenes video, but Starfield Mods should also be dropping right around the same time as the Summer Showcase. Last year, Bethesda opened up their verified creator program for Skyrim. Join and you could create and list mods on Bethesda's marketplace. This is a revenue share system, so every unit sold, the authors will get a cut and Bethesda takes a cut for themselves as well. This is coming to Starfield and verified creators got access to the Starfield creation kit early. From what I've heard, this happened around early February, so by the time of the showcase when mods actually drop, it'll be around three to four months. I ain't gonna lie, Starfield needs a lot of mods. That game is a wasteland. Months that many of these authors had access to these tools. So in all likelihood, around the showcase, we'll get to see a preview of some free and paid mods that are coming to Starfield. I mean, with paid mods, like, nobody wants to pay for it, right? But at the same time, all these developers that are making mods for free, and that's how they've been doing it for the past years. I mean, they got to make money somehow. You know what I'm saying? They they solely, mostly rely off of like donations. I've downloaded thousands of mods, and I think I've I haven't donated to a single one. So, although you know, kind of makes me seem like an asshole, but at the same time, it's free for a reason to give out to people that that want to use that want to play it and download them. So, I mean, with the rev share side of it. I feel like a lot of a lot more modders would come into it and make overall higher quality mods because now they're making some money back. But at the same time, a lot of the mods that would normally be free would now have a paywall, even if it's a very basic mod. So there's pros and cons to it, but I think uh, if it's a bad mod, just don't buy it. But then at the same time, the really good mods will have more money to make their mods even better. As I think uh, I think it would probably play out decently. And we'll likely see the official mod tools drop for everyone. And we definitely could see Starfield, quite a few mods man. here. Over the past few they months, need, and likely in anticipation for the Starfield release, of mods Bethesda has been that. seriously expanding their revamp. verified creator program. And from what Landing I've heard, dozens of additional so mod boring. authors have been invited to work on content for this one. We just recently saw that Bethesda invited many of these verified creators to their offices, and this is just a really cool gesture by Bethesda. The modders were able to talk to a bunch of Bethesda Game Studios devs, and regardless of your own feelings on paid mods, I think pretty much all of us can agree, it's great to see mod authors getting more opportunities to make money from their work, and I love that Bethesda is properly recognizing yeah, how- Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think, like, I think overall, if the modders have more money coming in, and now they have, like, a rev share system, so at least they, like, they don't have to charge on, like, Patreon or whatever, or whatever they're doing for mods like that, but then, like, all this time they're putting in- they can put even more time and make higher quality because now they're getting money back out of it. Invaluable so these creators I think overall, are. Although beyond would, uh, that, we have seen some good, minor details leaks system. or even just release date leaks around a variety of other titles from Tom Warren at The Verge. He claims that Avowed will drop in November, with Indiana Jones following it up in December, both likely to get new gameplay and a release date announcement during the showcase. And in this predictions article from just yesterday, Jess Corden reports that Avowed is shaping up nicely. I've heard the latest build looks oh, a lot more impressive than its previous what the hell reveal. This game that was. definitely gives me hope. The Avowed gameplay that we got last summer during the showcase was okay, but it definitely gave me Sea of Thieves vibes and I think turned a lot of people off of the game. Well, conversely, some of the gameplay we saw earlier this year at the Developer Direct actually looked a lot better and definitely got me a lot more excited for the I game. If things have this. only continued to improve to from them out. and perhaps even implemented more of the feedback from the community, it definitely it's makes me excited for whatever we see of Avowed at the Summer Showcase. We have seen several notable insiders come forward to confirm that Call of Duty is coming to Game Pass and to go along with that, changes should be coming to the Game Pass program. This likely being a price increase, but there also could potentially be a cheaper ad-supported Game Pass tier like many streaming services offer. You have to imagine at least part of this news will be revealed at this showcase, like Call of Duty coming to Game Pass Day 1. Earlier today, they revealed that the next Call of Duty will in fact be Black Ops 6, but perhaps at the showcase, they only reveal the positive parts and the price hike news comes later in a press release. Okay. And there are a variety of other games that have gotten mentions from insiders is likely trash. being a part of this showcase. Perfect Dark, which according to Nate the Hate, will 
will be at the showcase, and according to Jez Corden, the game is shaping up nicely, or even a new Gears of War game, which The Verge reports will be announced at the showcase, and potentially even along really? with a remaster of Gears of War 1, 2, and 3, which has also been rumored. Gear 6 specifically has been mentioned by several different sources, so it seems if to- they're, If they're planning on announcing all of this at the summer showcase, this is about to turn the gaming industry around. We're talking about a new Gears of War, Gears of War remasters, Fallout remaster, a new Fallout, Oblivion remaster, a new Doom. I mean, that's a lot of games right the, there. The likely candidate to be at the and showcase, a new MMO while the remaster is a bit less likely. And in his most recent report, Jez Corden mentions how Microsoft have also landed marketing deals for some major upcoming third-party titles too, with at least one gameplay debut that may bring solace to one weary fan base. Honestly, not entirely sure what this could be, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. A weary fan base is sadly very unspecific these days. And overall, more so than mm. anything else, I'm curious to see how this showcase lands. We've heard from several insiders how they really seem to be stacking this one up. Lots of games, release dates for a ton of different titles, larger looks at even further out games, and I think overall Xbox wants this showcase to really win back some fan support, so they'll likely be pulling out all of the stops they can to get that. But it's likely because they need to. You have to imagine Game Pass price increases and certain games going multi-platform will also be announced at least around the same time of the showcase, if not at the showcase directly. And that'll likely lead to a bunch of negative sentiment from fans, even if many of the games mm. themselves look amazing. So time will tell, but get subscribed because I'll definitely be keeping you up to date with all of this, but also check out this video to see what lays ahead for Fallout 76. Yeah, I mean... It sounds like they're, uh, like he said, they're trying to pull out all the stops here for this, man. And uh, I'm telling you, I mean, if they're planning on releasing all of this, like announce, announcing that they're coming out with all of these titles and remasters, I mean, that is going to be pretty big. But I guess we'll see. I mean, gaming industry is, uh, is in a little bit of a rut, especially with, uh, like, what, Ubisoft? I mean, prices are going crazy. $130 for Star Wars Outlaws, $130 for Assassin's Creed Shadows, and uh, I'm not going to dive into like the politics side of them, but the pricing alone on games is going going way up, and uh, yeah, I mean, they need to start catering to the fans, and that's why they're in this mess in the first place, so we'll see.